Nice, Jason. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How's that? How is that for the? I must have almost seen that in the air, Jason. In the air. That was fantastic. As soon as that's landed, it got set upon. Oh, that is unbelievable. That is fantastic. Well, no, that was that was so cool up there watching that. As it landed, it had to have almost seen it in the air. It had to. Because it just, the moment it landed, it thrashed it. it. And I'm waiting for that um, pull of the line. Anytime you hit, get a surface hit, it's no use striking no. until you feel the pull of the line. But, but I guess he had nowhere just, to go. No. He was just. <laughs> he sat and thrashed. He's looking at us now going, thanks, guys. You fooled me. Google shows if we go that way over this hill, there should be a track down the other side. We just don't know the quality of that track. Yeah. It is loose. Granted country. Yeah. This country is harsh, arid and vast. The animals here that survive have had to adapt and they're tough. We on the other hand, we have to come prepared because if we get caught out in this sort of country, it really isn't gonna end well. One issue with fishing the gorges, sometimes just getting to them. Getting into these gorges is not easy, and it should be approached with care. Nigel and Benny, well they seem to be in a bit of a hurry to get to the water. Well I was strategically taking my time, as I was pretty sure there wasn't just cod waiting for us when we got down there. These gorges are home to a vast array of wildlife as it's the only water for miles. So the competition is fierce and when you enter, you're seen by the wildlife as a threat. So we need to be very careful where we step. Better looking hole. Yeah. Yep, got that one. Oh, that one's got some weight on it. Yep. Oh. Nice work, Jase. Oh, no, he's heading for the tree. Get, Get him, him out. out of the tree. Get him out. Get out of the tree. Oh. You good? Oh, he's got me in the tree. There he comes. Got him oh, out. nice fish, Nige. You come down on that bank, you'll be able to get him for me. Yes. Wow. You never get tired of these, Jase. You've seen a lot of this. It's obviously one of our, our biggest Murray cod. There's a variety of freshwater cods in Australia. They are our biggest predators. And this one, the Murray cod, which you find west of the Great Divide. He's a native of the Murray-Darling system. And this one grows the biggest. One and a half metres, up to 100 kilos, Jase. That's a fair chunk of a fish. They're beautiful Murray cod. Now, they're a hunting machine the size of that mouth. These guys will eat ducks, lizards, pretty much anything that comes in their territory. They've got these beautiful raspy teeth. So anything they do grab stays in there. So they're just a born hunter. Eyes on the top of their head, so they'll eat surface and they'll hunt on the bottom. This one followed my spinnerbait all the way along the bottom and it was just too much for him. It was nice and slow rolled and that's when he ate it. The reason why this spinnerbait is so effective, especially in areas where you've got rock ledges and trees and things that are going to catch up a, a normal lure, is that the hook actually faces upwards inside that cage. So you can drop it in, you can crawl it along the bottom, they do get hooked up on the odd occasion, but uh, they're very, very snag resistant. And the attraction of the two blades making that noise and the skirt, this one's rigged with a, a stinger, so when they come and nip at the tail, 
that's when you get that hook up. These are a fantastic, versatile lure for most freshwater species and you can use them in salt. Next one. We kept on moving from waterhole to waterhole with the two young bulls always in a hurry. But despite how good it looked, the fishing was actually pretty tough. What a hit! <laughs> that night is worth the walk. He ate that spinnerbait, pretty much first wine. So it was cast across, let it sink down the face of the rock on the other side. As my line's gone slack and it's gone, yep, I'm on the bottom, one wind, it's come up. And this guy has just crunched it. Have a look at that, Jase. Thought he's a bit bigger in the water. They look a bit sizable, but he shrunk a little bit. And the first thing you notice, this one's got a few sores on it, which you tend to see in a lot of our native species. When water levels get low and the chemistry starts to change, you find a few algae blooms and the like, and they get a little bit off kilter and you start seeing them fight that with a few sores appearing. And the key there is to obviously try and keep your hands wet and not remove a lot of slime, because when you do and you put them back, that's when more sores start to kick into gear. So we're gonna be very careful, get the hook out of this one, and let him go. <laughs> One of the real joys of being an angler that gets way off the beaten track is just what you see sometimes and here's in my opinion one of our cutest local animals, our resident anteater, the echidna. He's seen us so he's doing his best to take shelter under a rock. Not very well but if you wanted to attack him from this end I reckon you get a pretty nasty sharp little surprise. The platypus is keen isn't he? With the fishing being pretty slow, it was decided we would head back to the car. We checked Nigel's watch so we had our GPS position for where the car was and off we went. The whole time under the watchful eyes of the many locals. I'm happy to see the car Nigel. It was certainly a lot easier going downhill than it was coming up. It's time to pack up, head for our camping spot. Set up for a couple of cold beverages, maybe a little afternoon session before then. Check this out, this is massive. This is one of the grubs which is highly used by the locals for, uh, for using for bait fishing for these Murray Cod. And this thing's massive. I'll tell you what, if I was gonna try and put it on a hook, I'm, I'm probably gonna need help. It's gonna take some wrestling. This bad boy though, he's going back home. Oh! Yours just went in the water, Nige. These uh, ten pegs are really designed for dirt. And as we have set ourselves up on what can only be described as a beautiful sand island, which it was my idea because it looks pretty cool, I have gone and got some rocks, haven't I Nigel? So we've improvised because that peg is not going to do anything. Necessity is the mother of invention. With the camp set up, we have one more chance to rescue our day's reward for effort ratio. Got him. Yep. Nice. Crunched it. Just got him to bottom. Two rolls and whack. It's a good one too. 
set up camp. Quick little other evening fish. Three casts into it. We've come up solid. Got him. Nice work. Those don't get tired of seeing them in waterways like this. What's really amazed me today is all these pools are not linked anymore. They're all independent pools. There's no flow. And these fish are learning to survive in significant drought. And you hear stories at the moment, we've got significant problems out in the upper Darling far west where we've got big cod 40 year old fish that are now dying because the river has reached a point that the oxygen levels are not there. And we're obviously starting to look now at irrigation practices. And I think these days it's a very important lesson that what value do we place on our fish. And we've got stock fish like trout, which we place a big value on. And then we also value our water a certain way in terms of dollar per litre, which look, our houses are irrigated. We've got to put it into context. If we value our fish just a little bit higher and maybe look at our management practices, maybe that in places like that, we can look after the fish a bit better because they can certainly survive a drought. Murray cod use structure for cover and ambush points. So when you're targeting them, you need to put your lure right in the thick of things. And of course, hang on. Oh, got him, got him. Yes, get away from that. Oh, yes. There we go. Oh, come on. Come on, matey. <laughs> Such an ambush feeder. That was a cast of meters. Put it into the corner there, and as I went it over this rock, he is calm and smashed it. It just shows you, even in drought waters, they're sitting down there waiting for anything suspecting to come their way. And you don't have to look at them for very long to work out with mottling like that. They blend into this surrounding so well. They just made for launching themselves and killing stuff that comes their way. Oh yes, that was just, just awesome. Yeah, when you finish with that one. <laughs> hey, go on Jase, you want a hand? Yes please mate. Bring him my way. I've got a tree between me and you. Okay. Oh, good luck. Yeah. Look at oh. that beautiful fish. Have you got one just like it, night? <laughs> I knew you couldn't be left out of the action. <laughs> I knew you couldn't be left out of it. Well, I was watching you doing a great job there to the camera, and I thought, well, while you're doing that, I'll just have a practice cast. <laughs> Obviously, a size class that's flourishing in these waters at the moment. As bad as it may seem for us to look at this water, these things are just doing so very well and still bully boys. Yes, they, <laughs> they want anything that comes and annoys them in their space to go into that mouth. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> wow. Jump out of my feet. God, mate. Mate. <laughs> I don't think How you were paying much attention. How aggressive was that? <laughs> Didn't he want it? He's followed it all the way in, I reckon, and as it's gone to the top... He's smushed it. has gone. Nah. I'll have you. Cracker. Oh. Oh, he's actually is he's bigger a, than I thought. Oh, but he's a little tacker. Well, the evening session has well and truly paid off, and at this stage, we're fishing just to the top of the gorge, pretty much the last pool before the country starts dropping down and tomorrow morning that's where we'll be heading. But what a fantastic way to finish a day exploring the gorges. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. Yep, 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 yep. Oh. Wow, that's uh, another native species to this area. It's a yellow belly. Wow, that's pretty cool to catch in amongst the, uh, the cod in the area. These guys grow quite large and fat in impoundments and dams, but in natural waterways like this, they're not quite going to get as big. And this one's actually quite muscly. They're usually quite uh, fat in the belly, but this one's obviously had to do a bit of work for his feed. But that is so cool. It's a bit of a challenge. It's one of the driest times, two and a half years of just drought. And we've come down, we've caught some trout and cod, and we've put a lot of effort in, trust me. These legs of mine are going to struggle to get me back up, but it's all worth it. That's fantastic. You, my friend, can move on. <laughs> oh, you got him? Oh, 
Yeah, he just woke up. <laughs> well done, Benny. Little evening time cod. It's been amazing to fish them through the middle of the day and see just how tough they can be. You know, one here, one there. Suddenly dusk in these pools, whole joint comes alive and you come to the party, mate. Yeah, about time. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> is there a better way to wake up and start the day, Jason? No, there isn't. We saw him, came up and boiled it. I actually saw that big white chin come up and implode on that lure. That noise that you hear reverberating through these gorges is the sound of an inhalation feeder. So the way that they eat is they suck a whole lot of water in and he would have thought this was a frog or a lizard that's fallen in and trying to escape to the other side. And at this time of the day, low light, happy to come out and feed in the open and take on an easy meal if it comes their way. And it is one of the most exciting ways to catch a fish. So there he is, mate. That is a beautiful way to start the day. What a great profile lure. I really just want to imitate food, don't you? And so for a cod that lives in the gorges, a lot of the lizards we see running around here. You, know, you woke up and there's a frog looking at you out of your swag this morning. <laughs> it's very much the size they're going to eat and it's got a lovely little noise on top so it attracts attention. And uh, day two has begun and we've got a bit of rain on our swag last night, which I didn't really like a whole lot, but if it starts like this, I don't care. Yeah. Oh, Jason. Oh! Ha! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How's that? How is that for the. That must have almost seen that in the air, Jason. Yeah, that was fantastic. As soon as that's landed, it got set upon. <gasps> oh, that is unbelievable. That is fantastic. Oh, no, that was that was so cool up there watching that. As it landed, it had to have almost seen it in the air. It had to. Because it just, the moment it landed, it thrashed it. it. And I'm waiting for that um, pull of the line. Anytime you hit, get a surface hit, it's no use striking no. until you feel the pull of the line. But, but I guess he had nowhere just, to go. No. He was just... <laughs> he sat and thrashed. He's looking at us now going, thanks guys. You fooled me. Look at that. That is prime gorge country Murray Cod. Sitting there nice and early, waiting for his food to come down. And uh, putting your presentation in the right place is, is the key. You had a couple of casts with nothing. And then all of a sudden, as soon as it hit that cliff face, just exploded on it. Beautiful start to the day. <laughs> oh yes, got him. Yes, no. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they like this white one. <laughs> yes, they do. How's that for fish that size? That bite was just a violent eruption. It physically scares you, and I think that's the reason we get up early and throw these sorts of lures around, because a bite like that is in the memory bank for a while. It's been such an awesome journey coming to low water levels and finding these fish, and you talk to the scientists about why they're such a long-lived fish, and they'll, they very much believe that it's to do with the spawning habits, that these fish, will spawn their hardest in what they call mega spawning events. And that only happens in massive spring floods, which sometimes only happen every 10 to 20 years. So we need those big floods and we need these fish to be around for a long time for those mega spawning events to allow the strong genes to survive. And it's when we have things like river regulation, and it's, it's almost subtle because we don't notice it as much when it's flooding. But if we drop those flood levels a little bit by taking too much water out of a river, we very much hamper these guys' efforts for those strong spawning events. Something to keep in mind. And that in mind, mate, I'm gonna let you go away to grow bigger. There's another pool around the corner. Oh, 
Oh. One on it. Yep. Yeah. Yes! How <laughs> <laughs> cool is this? The channel of success, Jace. But yes. It just had to be one up there. Yeah. Had to be. Good casting too. Importance of accurate casting. You know, a lot of mates of mine, they catch a lot of fish on lures and there's one thing that they all do well, they land lures exactly where they want to land them. And I'd say that is the sign of a hunter that really wants to eat something and good at doing it. So as the sun is starting to rise, the pools that we were just in are getting the sun directly on them, so the fish are shutting down. So heading downstream, looking for that shadier sort of area, and hopefully we can keep that surface by going a bit longer. Aggressive here, mate. That's a big water dragon. Ooh. Yeah, he is. Yes. He fall off. Oh yes. <laughs> Oh, I saw him come up under it. Oh, Jason. He's still there, still there. Twitch it, twitch it, twitch it. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got another one. Yeah. I'm coming down. Is his mate still there? I can't see him now. There it is, my friend. There's a much bigger one with it. Yeah, well, <laughs> you take every one you get, won't you? Absolutely. As we moved on, watching the platypus play, we felt so privileged just to be in such a beautiful, natural environment. Oh, yes! <laughs> Got it. Nice fish night. <laughs> That's a bit better, that one. <laughs> nice work. Cracker. Uh, Dark fish. Beautiful. <laughs> right against the rock. Nice. As the many trodden kilometres started taking its toll on my soon to be retired footwear, I had a chance to sit back and soak up the natural atmosphere. I broke out the duct tape and sat there appreciating what Nige, Benny and myself had just experienced. This place may be harsh, but that is its true beauty. He's not a bad one either. Gorgeous fish, look at that. This has been amazing. Oh. What a morning. Like we had a great day yesterday, spinnerbaiting these cod and just seeing how they behave and understanding what they do in drought. To come here and have a surface bite like that, I don't know, we'll probably talk all the way back to Queensland about this morning. Pretty spoiled. He's a nice fish, Nige. He's a solid one, mate. I'll pass him up to you. He's chunky too. This one's in good nick. Mate, I reckon the sun getting up, we've still got a long drive ahead of us to get home. I reckon that's a pretty good way to finish an amazing trip to the gorge. We played with trout, and then we played with, you'd call them drought-stricken Murray cod, and they've proved what survivors they are, and just how good they are at eating anything that comes into their space. And mate, big thanks to Benny Lockwood for showing us where the fish are, as he so often does, and uh, saved us a lot of time hunting around. Awesome, mate. Look at this back and start walking those cool shoes of yours back out of this gorge. Thank you, mate. That was awesome. We'll remember that for a long time.